What's up guys, welcome back and thanks for joining me. And if this is your first time checking me out, we basically talk about all types of money on this channel. So if you like the stuff that you see scrolling by on your screen right now, you're in the right place. So go ahead and make yourself comfortable. Stick around for the video. If you feel I've earned it at the end, go ahead and hit me with a like and subscribe and pop that notification bell. I really appreciate that. Now, in today's video, we're going to talk about credit scores, the whole truth about credit scores. I've gotten lots of questions recently about credit scores. People just don't understand how these scores are compiled and are scores that they see in certain places on the internet accurate. So I get questions like, so, you know, how much is my actual, if I miss a payment, how much does that hurt my credit score? Are those scores on Credit Karma actually real? Hey, we're getting ready to put all of that stuff to rest right now, answer all those questions. So let's dive right into it. The first thing is there are three major bureaus that are pulling your credit, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, okay? So you actually have three scores from, a score from each one of those bureaus. And in most cases, all three of those scores will be different. Now, the lowest credit score that you can have is 300. The highest you can have is 850. You want to stay away from the 300s and of course having an 850 score would be a dream next credit karma scores are actually accurate they are compiled using what's called the vantage scoring model and we're going to look at the vantage scoring model and we're also going to look at the more widely used fico scoring model right now so i have the fico scoring model up now so you can see that it's 35 percent of your score okay is your payment history your payment history is absolutely the biggest part of your credit score 30 percent is your credit utilization or outstanding debt 15 percent is your length of credit history followed by 10 percent which is a mix of credit so a mix of credit means installment and revolving installment credit is stuff like a credit card oh i'm sorry installment credit would be things like a mortgage or a car note and revolving would be things like a credit card or a line of credit last is 10 percent that's very overlooked but can have a huge impact and that is your pursuit of new credit or how many times you have applied for credit now the vantage scoring model is a little bit different and there's actually a couple that i'm going to highlight in this model 40 percent of your score is based on your payment history so you see this reoccurring theme the payment history is a big, big, big part of your credit score, followed by 34%, which is a combination of your credit utilization at 20%, your credit balances at 11%, and your available credit, which is 3%. Then 21% is your depth of credit or the length of credit history, and 5% is your pursuit of new credit or amount of recent credit applications. Now, in another Vantage scoring model, it's slightly different, but not by a whole lot. Payment history is still king, 32% of the scores, payment history. Your credit utilization is 23%. The balances is 15%. The length of credit history is 10%. The recent, uh, in, the recent uh, inquiries or pursuit of new credit is also 10% and then your available credit is 7%. So in the Vantage scoring model, it is a little bit different than FICO, but that is why the scores are different from Credit Karma from what you would see on my FICO because Credit Karma is using Vantage and my FICO is using a FICO scoring model. Now there's several different FICO scoring models. There's a different model if you're applying for a mortgage, then if you are applying for a car loan, then if you are applying for a personal loan. But the FICO model is, you know, just a little bit different from Vantage. Now with a Vantage scoring model, there are lenders that use them. People think that those scores are worthless and that's not true. I would estimate about 20% of lenders use the Vantage scoring model. Now, in my personal case of the trade lines, 
that I have on my own personal credit, 25% of them use the Vantage scoring model when they determine whether or not they were going to extend credit to me or not. And the other 75% use FICO. So while FICO is more widely used, the Vantage scoring model is still implemented by some lenders. Now, even if you have great credit, there are things that you can do that will still get you denied by certain lenders. I'm gonna throw up one example. It's the Chase 524 rule. Chase, which is a huge lender that has some great products, is also very strict and they don't want to see you over applying or being too overzealous with how you apply for new credit. So they came up with the 524 rule, which basically looks a little bit like this. Many card issuers have criteria for who can qualify for new accounts, but Chase is perhaps the most strict. Chase's 524 rule means that you can't be approved for most Chase cards if you've opened five or more personal credit cards from any card issuer within the last 24 months. So that's just one stipulation, guys, but there are many. So I always recommend when you are looking for a new credit card, you should really research all of the criteria. And that's going to be a whole nother video about the things that you need to look for before even deciding to apply. Also, make note of this. You can have a really high credit score, but if your credit profile is not good, you can still be turned down by lenders. What do I mean by credit profile? So your credit score is 740, which is a really good credit score, but all of your accounts are authorized user accounts. None of them are yours, or maybe the only uh, account that's yours is six months old and you have authorized user accounts that have a very low uh, length of history or that maybe one has higher usage. So things like this can actually make you still be denied even with the high credit score. So you need to understand that credit scoring is actually twofold. It is the credit score and the credit profile. So those are just a few things guys to look for when you are looking at your credit score and trying to figure out how it's compiled. I shared with you the FICO pie as well as the two most commonly used Vantage pies. And now you know what the actual score range is and the credit bureaus. So I have links to all those bureaus in this video. You need to go there and set up your accounts so you can actually view your credit. You can actually protect your credit by freezing it when you know that you're not going to be applying for new credit and these are totally free services so i absolutely encourage you to take advantage of it so if you found value in this content please do me a favor support this channel with a like and a subscribe and if you're already enjoying great credit but you want to figure out how to get some either higher even higher limits than what you currently have this video up here will help you out with that on that note, guys, until next time, I'm gone.